Greetings in the name of the Most High, Yahushua, Jesus, the one Yahweh Elohim God, Christ, as one, and uh, it's been a while, I, you know, I've, I've simply been watching like you, as all my predictions come, came true, I mean, the prediction in 2008, for example, I predicted that Obama would be the end of free speech. Now, that doesn't seem like much now, but in 2008, that was a pretty big statement to make. But that's what I was shown by the Lord. So I said it. This was the advent of totalitarianism, that the president would turn the military assets on the people. I've been predicting that for a number of years. Now it's already happened and we're going beyond it. Let me just, I mean, there, there's dozens of these predictions that were made over the years. The kings of terror would resume. The death season. We talked about that since... The early 2000s, well, the death season is basically the rise of drones and the age of legal government killing. And the last victim was uh, Michael Hastings, but, uh, you know, anywhere in the world, the American assassin or the American government as assassin to kill anybody they please um, has become front page news. It's not just the conspiracy blogs. This is now mainstream. NDAA is a reality. And all that is is a license to kill anyone the government perceives as its enemy anytime, anywhere. No, they're not going to pick people up and have some sort of, you know, controversial trial. What they're going to do is what they do is simply eliminate the threat. And Michael Hastings cannot publish his article that would be damning about the government. And it probably wasn't even that bad. I mean, it probably was major corruption, but it may not have been that bad, but it may have cost a lot of billions of dollars. Nobody's life is worth billions, hence Hastings is gone. The only culprit, the only suspect, is the U.S. government. That's the only suspect there is because they're the only one who benefits. They're the only ones who benefit. They're the only ones who benefit. I just can't make that more clear. You know, qui bono, it would be the U.S. government that doesn't want certain information coming out. And so there was a car bomb planted on underneath Michael Hastings' Mercedes, causing it to jackknife straight up in the air, as witnesses reported, and the engine to be flung from the chassis some 60 yards away from the vehicle, without it ever hitting anything. <laughs> yeah, even if it crashed into the, the tree, as alleged, um, the engine would have been in the vehicle. So there you go, and the public just go ahead and swallows it. Also my prediction, and this is an ongoing prediction, that the public will swallow anything because the whole purpose of things like 9-11 and terror attacks is to desensitize people so that when they hear about these things, they go ahead and just have a feeling of helplessness and go ahead and just give in, hoping not to get hurt themselves. You know, and as Hitler picks up various groups of people, the gypsies, you know, the gays, the various, the other people say, well, at least it's not me, right? And so eventually they do come for you. And uh, so this is what they're trying to do, and they're all, you know, Aliz Alinskyite revolutionaries, and they're all, the entire U.S. government is in bed with the uh, Obama administration. They're all behind him 100%. This is the stealth takeover where they were all vetted to make sure that when the revolution came down, they would, they would all be, you know, have infiltrated the Pentagon, the CIA, NSA, uh, FBI, and gotten rid of patriots wherever they found them to purge them. So when this day came, they would all be on the same team. Hence, that's why you have the global 
assassinations ramping up to an all-time high. The death season, the kings of terror. Who are the kings of terror? Government. Not the kings of terror. I used to say the kings of terror. I mean, that was the word I got. Like, I'd have to decipher it from the Lord. The kings of terror. There are no, you know, homegrown terrorists or anything else. The only terrorists are um, the powers that be. That's pretty much it. Because the, the rest of the people have a feeling, like I say, of helplessness. They're not going to become terrorists or freedom fighters. They're already cowed. They're already cowed into submission. And so basically now the war is against those last few patriots, wherever they are, who are mounting a noble and valiant struggle against the global oligarchy. And, uh, and that noble and valiant struggle against the oligarchy, they feel they can win and I'm here to tell you they will lose. So I knew you'd want to tune in for that. And my dogs are, they, they were, they came in to get a snack and now they're, but I didn't give them one because I had this word. And this really isn't even the, the topic today, but I'm trying to remember what the topic was, why it was so important for me to, get going at 3.30 a.m. I suppose the reason is we were going back over things with the Lord and, oh yes, greetings to all you not quite human people. You know who you are. You belonged to God, but you're not exactly um, the same as human. And then those who are peculiar who were being changed to be something other than what you were. And greetings to you as well. Um, the not quite human thing, well, you know, it's really not that important. But um, there are all kinds of beings and all kinds of things going on. There's quite a bit of diversity among God's creation and creatures, and just as there is among Satan's, although it's not a contest between God and Satan. You know, I've spent a lot of time around, you know, music and different artists, and and as I was saying to a friend, I just said, you know, the problem is the lyrics are vapid. It's all personal stuff, you know. It's, none of it rises to the level of consciousness. You know, it's more visceral. And, you know, maybe it rises to the level of game playing between witches and warlocks and people who wanted to get it over on the other guy and the other guy is trying to get it over on the other guy. and The battle of the witches. And I'm... And then there's the stealing of, uh, you know, the Steely Dan. Uh, the, the, so, you know, so you, you fire till he is done, and but they catch you at the border. You go back, Jack, do it again. Ah, but the, the, the man who stole your water, i.e. stole your slave that you're feeding off of. Water, bodily fluids, I don't know, blood, sperm, sweat. <laughs> what does it matter? It's all based on a delusion and a lie. Anyway, that song is all about the game. The border, the border in that in that song represents uh, backjack to it again. Uh, da 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 da. But they, the man who stole you, where you fire till he is done, but they catch you at the border. Fire throw spells, whammies, whatever. Catch you at the border. The border is the line between God and the devil. And that's basically uh, Steely Dan coming at it from a satanic perspective, figuring that no one would ever understand the lyrics or whatever. Or I shouldn't say, you know, bodily flow, I'll just say life force. In other words, if I can steal your life force, you know, sex, desire, whatever, use it for myself to in increase my talents and my fortunes, then I've just stolen from you and used for myself, 
and that's the satanic game, you know, and then um, usually they try to find people that are like, you know, lambs to the slaughter, you know, people, you know, fools that don't know that this is going on and uh, don't protect themselves and um, figure they don't have protection. It's just like the wolf going after the sheep and they get a hold of you and they, you know, put you in, you know, they buy and sell you behind your back and they feel like they own you. And then they feel like they can raid the uh, fridge and take the goodies for themselves while putting you into a submissive role underneath them. Oh boy, isn't that evil. And that's, um, yes, Mr. Chim Morrison, that's what the definition, the literal definition of break on through to the other side. <laughs> isn't it lovely? Aren't these people lovely and wonderful? Don't they have their secrets hidden? Aren't they beyond? And this entire thing is is got to do with the devil's realm. Now, let me. Uh, my role as your quote unquote desert prophet is to tell you that other side begs the question: other side of what? And it would be the other side of the line, meaning the border, right? They catch you at the border. What was that Celia Dan song called? I can't remember the name of it. You go back, Jack, do it again. Keep on doing it. You just keep on doing it. Keep on chuglane. I keep on chuglane, chuglane, chuglane. Yeah. Don't stop believing. Don't stop believing. Same thing, you know. Don't stop believing in the Matrix. The Steely Dan song went, but you fire till he is done, and but then they catch you at the border. You go back, Jack, do it again. So you got to go do more rituals uh, to get it going on again. Uh, when they steal a lamb from you, then that's stealing your water. Okay, water is the source of life, right? Water is also the sex drive. Water is the is uh, the bodily fluid, the, you know, uh, sperm, blood, whatever. It's all part of the life force uh, to use in the uh, generational witchcraft and the queens who get all the bees hovering and uh, they have a nice little hive of slavery that is across the border, meaning dead and not part of God's kingdom any longer. Or the Bible defines it. See, the Bible describes the entire thing. That's the important thing about the Bible. The Bible describes it as twice dead. Um, since I know all these rock bands and the history of rock, you know, way back to the beginning, and um, I'm not that interested in the 50s rock or Chuck Berry or any of that, but, um, you know, the Beatles, the Stones, the Bob Dylan, the Hendrix, the... You know, the Led Zeppelin, the, you know, the root, kind of like that for me, that's like the, 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 the area, 67, I'll just say, you know, 65 through 75, and then the, the, the same people are still touring today. Sympathy for the devil. Um, the nature of the game is very simple. It's to corrupt the DNA of humans. And uh, those who help in that, you know, to, to corrupt to destroy, to steal the gifts of humans for, and, and to use for themselves. Those who do for the satanic kingdom get boosted into positions of power at the Pentagon or at the Congress or at the rock star or at the Academy Award or at the this or at the that or whatever, at these various stations. And then there's the other lowly ones who remain janitors and witches, you know, uh, maids and stuff, who are there for the power and who really run all the rich people. And that's kind of like the way that uh, I had seen it growing up, you know, because I've seen it since I was zero. So, you know, so the, that's, the, has, I've always seen it that way. In fact, it got so, so blatant against me at one point that, uh, you know, they were, they were just doing, oh, just pretty much openly just trying to poison and kill me, you know, at some point when they realized that I, that I understood uh, what was going on. And, uh, I just have a message for, for those who believe that they can win the game. You lose. 
you've already lost. Just like this woman that was, you know, poisoning me, poisoned my mother. She was like um, a Santeria generational witch who had attempted murder, in, in my case, several times. But then, you know, we got, eventually got on to her because every time I'd go to her house, she, she was there as my mother's caregiver and also a maid. And she would be lighting these black candles in front of me wherever I went, you know. <laughs> it just sort of became obvious. And then eventually the whole story came out that she had been uh, putting bugs in the food and, and caused quite a bit of damage, you know, physical damage. And, um, you know, I was doing, doing other stuff and, and vying to get, I don't know, she wanted the things my mother had or whatever and wanted to eliminate me and my brother and to make sure that, you know, you know there's this whole thing going on revolving around money. Anyway, what did she wind up with after my mother's passing? She wound up with a big fat zero. Nothing. For all these years of plotting. And that just had come to ruin, even though someone like me, I didn't know anything about it. I, I just thought, you know, you, she can't believe in surfaces, but, you know, she was basically running things. And uh, hated me. <laughs> But uh, that's another story. It's just from that and from various incidents like that, I could see that, you know, there was this, um, you know, it all kind of revolves around power, money, and sex, and control. So the people in the more lowly positions who tend to be, you know, the witches were like more hardcore, they kind of control. In fact, a lot of the politicians, when they want to get elected, they go to these third world countries to get witch doctors and mambos and whatnot, you know, to do their rituals in their behalf, you know, their sacrifices, the blood sacrifices, so that they can win elective office. And um, it's a very common practice, you know. And uh, in take Hollywood, for example, in Hollywood, um, and I'm, I'm happy to say that, you know, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, well, half the things my mother had got sold to pay the taxes, so that maid wasn't going to get anything anyway. So it was all sold. I'm happy to say we're not in California. We've got nothing to do with it, you know. What a horrible state that is. But I grew up there and grew up around uh, the whole satanic Hollywood thing and at a, at a very young age had seen already horrific, you know, generational pedophilia, uh, satanic, uh, you know, rituals, abuse, but it was all part of society. You know, it wasn't like it was um, some cult. There, see, the, the, the mistake that I hear, when I hear people talking about, oh, we got to go get this cult or infiltrate that cult or talk to law enforcement, it's like, talk to law enforcement? What are you talking about? There is no cult. They're all in on it. You know, this is just the, the, the ubiquitous spiritual battle. There are no cults. So when I hear people talk about cults, I go automatically, you, sir, who say you're in Jesus, but talking about cults that you want to go after and report them to the police or whatever, you, sir, are also a Satanist. Because you should know by now there are no cults. Why would you say such a thing? Because you're protecting your own kind of like hidden layer of your part of the matrix. And you know who you are. Oh, you're not connected to God. Half the people that say they are aren't anyway. They're just liars. It's sort of like, did you sell your soul to the devil to become a famous rock star? Of course not. I'm a big time Christian. And the answer is, yes, I did. But, you know, just like when you're in the mafia, you know, you start off doing bad things. And then eventually, you know, you work your way up, and when you become a made man, you get to uh, be very charitable and be like, you know, the uh, beneficent benefactor to humanity. And sort of wash it all away with good deeds. And I've got news for you all. No good deed you do will earn you anything. All your good deeds are as filthy rags unto the Lord. Period. Now, what the Lord wants is your soul. See? And you have free will, so you have the choice to do with that soul what you want. Cash it in 
for early profits now and then, you know, and then crash and burn later or preserve it with, you know, people being mad at you because they want it and uh, holding it out for the Lord, meaning being like a virgin unto your, um, being like a virgin unto marriage. No, no one is a virgin, you know, and most people aren't even a virgin to the satanic thing. You know, they're, they're all, they're, they just don't understand what it is, so that's what I'm here for, to prophesy about it, which is what this, uh, this is, everything I've said today is prophecy. Every single utterance is prophetic. There's nothing that isn't prophetic in this. This is the same as Ezekiel looking behind that, that closed wall and seeing all the leaders doing abominations. It's the same thing. There is no Santa Claus. Um, would I like to see the world change? Yes, but it won't. I'm here to predict exactly what will happen. In the next uh, year, you will see the Obama administration spiral downward even further than now to a to even beyond Jimmy Carter status in terms of ineptitude. And the, the funny thing is, the cynical part is, yeah, but this guy goes around killing people. That's right. And nobody cares. It's all out in the news. The drone strikes us that no, no due process, no nothing. He likes it. He's yeah, collateral damage. I'm not saying we're not going to get our hair must, et cetera, et cetera. And basically the bottom line is... <laughs> You know, that would be a pretty snarky kind of, yeah, cynical guy, you know, going around killing people. Ugh, you know, I'm a tough street, tough guy, like the mob. And the thing is, no, but the, but the, 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 the aura of ineptitude be, because of the killings, I'm saying over the next six months, it, in a graduating worse and worse and worse, it will become worse and worse. The ineptitude will become more and more and more pronounced until all the media turns on him. It's just, you know, people just hold their nose till he's gone type of thing. And, um, no, they're not going to say anything because he's black and they're going to do all that political correctness because of this black thing, which, of course, is, again, stupid, ridiculous, and unbelievable that I'm even on this planet wasting my time with the likes of these people. I mean, why would I even be here, right? I, it, obviously, it's because I must speak to it. I must say something about it. That's probably why I'm here. I do it in my all the music I do is pretty much basically about that. And uh, I have, you know, I'm happy to report I have uh, basically where I should have total support, and rock stars should be emulating me and getting there on the path to glory, you know, on the path to victory. Instead, they're just doubling down on their own stupidity. Why? I mean, how many beer commercials and Mercedes commercials and logos can you stick on your concert wall where you're going to do your thing and having all the sponsors and, and all their logos all over everything and all of them pledged to Satan? I mean, how long can you do? Don't you understand? You're just a a commodity, a nothing, a you know, when you're done, they just fill the box with somebody else. Why don't you write about something important? Because if I'm doomed, then I might lose my place in line, and I'm just going to wait until I retire. You know, okay, uh, there's, you see what I mean? There is no way. So I'm going to speak to what I can speak to. I can't speak to you, so move out. Can't speak to you, so move out. Turn it off, don't listen. Some people get so mad at me because they go, you're sponsoring your own podcast because you're rich, you're, you're rich, you're bankrolling yourself. And the alternative is, and if I was sponsored by somebody else? Well, then you're a sellout. Oh, I see. So if I'm... <laughs> um, those kind of people I throw in the garbage now. And oh no, I don't consider you brethren at all. In any way, shape, or form. No, see, I don't believe in lost brethren. Let me make this very clear. There is no lost brethren. 
you feel an affinity with people or you don't. And, you know, wherever they are in their spiritual walk or their spiritual understanding, it's irrelevant. It's like you either feel that connection or you don't. With most Christians, I feel no connection whatsoever. Most. Who profess to be practicing Christians. I do not feel an affinity, a connection, um, an emotion that would tie us. I feel nothing. And I, I have no need of them in my life, so I don't, I don't seek them. I feel a connection with people uh, across the spectrum. And when I do, I, I tend to you know, and open myself to them and have them in my life. But in general, um, people that claim to be religious or making a show of their religion or whatever, I think Jesus spoke to that very well. He said, you know, if you're going to give a gift, give it in secret so you don't have to take credit for it, basically. Now, the only wisdom that you need to have is this, to know that, look, you're on this treadmill and you're going to die in about five seconds and the reason you're here is to decide what side you're on and to walk it out one way or the other. If you're on the side of um, the devil, flesh, your ego, your own whatever, self-aggrandizement or you as God or whatever it is, or your apotheosis or you Freemasons like you think you're going to become divine beings or you may, Mormons or whatever, uh, I got news for you, none of that's going to happen, and none of it ever has happened. The spirits that you contact on the other side, that claim to be like George Washington or these various people that you feel were, you know, Masonic brothers, those are demonic entities that are imitating that person. And they do know all the, where all the bodies are buried, all the secrets and all the code words, so that even if you try to vet them, they will just simply keep lying to you to keep you on the same path so that you perish. What, what does perish mean? Uh, Obadiah says it perfectly in the Bible, as if these are also referred to as the children of Esau, meaning self-willed and uh, disobedient um, and uh, uh, rebellious toward God. What happens to you is basically nothing. You, you're just as if you never were, ultimately. There is, in other words, nothing. The, the, the point is your life is nothing. The, the vapor, the wisp or vapor that you think is you, this life now is important is but a vapor. It's nothing. Let me, let me rest, make sure you understand this so when you make your choice you can understand. Your life right now is insignificant. It's nothing. I don't care what you do. People say, I've been around a lot of musicians, they play music to feel like they are doing something, like they are somebody. No, you're not. Whatever gift you have for playing isn't your coming from you anyway. It was given to you. So if you just worship yourself rather than have appreciation about that gift, then you are living in a delusion, in a lie. And the sad part of the lie is it's over in a split second, and um, if you're not in possession of your soul, then you are deemed... Um, you know, it's not like you're deemed anything. The judgment is... Do you exist? It's really like an A or F. In Christ, covered by the blood of Christ, with the faith of Jesus, um, you become, yeah, a virgin. And you have to be a virgin to be married in the, in the wedding of the Lamb and his bride. And all this is symbolical. Symbological, or sy sy not symbiotic, but Sim symbol, symbol-like. Uh, so there has to be some sort of element that would wash you clean to prepare you for the wedding. And, you know, Satan offers the unholy wedding, the breaking through to the other side, and, and, and uh, the, the thing is, Jesus offers redemption from that because... Technically, not you can't sell your soul. It's really more like this. Oh, I know they trade in souls and they trade lambs back and forth like trading cards. I understand. And they siphon off all the gifts to use for themselves and then kick that poor lamb down the stairs. I understand. You know, um, let me just explain something from, the, from Yahweh. 
Yahweh, the God of the Bible, the God create, who created all things that are made. He hates that. And he hates you that do it. And he'll just put the shield over your eyes so you can't hear, you know, in your ears so you can't hear and you can't see. So you're going to just keep thinking you're a genius to have figured this out. And then one day, there's an awakening. And you see your hands covered in blood. And you see your life just basically existing at the expense of all these people that are now like skeletons surrounding you. And they pick up their swords and everything like Jason and the Argonauts. And, they, and these skeletons are now animated and they're coming at you to cut you to shreds. To take you down with them where you belong. Because you made your life on the blood, sweat, and tears of others and the generations. And because you did that, um, without any kind of repentance or forgiving a you know, legal agent, without a legal agent, a legal maneuver, you will be as dust meaning never having existed in the first place because this existence isn't really real. And I know so many of you long for, you long for attention. You long to be acknowledged. You long to, to, to give, be given credit. Now, let me tell you something. Credit here, and you know I fall into that trap too. Credit here is irrelevant because what you're doing is irrelevant. The only real re relevant thing in the end is, you know, what you will choose. And then, having made that choice, of course, your actions will show as to where your heart is. If your heart is basically on yourself and getting ahead, you will go further behind. Um, I don't know why that is. People analyze very successful business people, you know, like we, we were doing that the other day in the case of one guy who's magnificently successful. And um, people say, yeah, but he's such a nerd. He's like a social nerd. He doesn't really get what's going on. He's, you know, like, like sort of like a Mr. Magoo, you know. It's, it's just like, it's like, no, um, that's the point. You see, that's why he's magnificently successful. Because his responses and his desires and everything aren't all tied up with, you know, the, the, the focus is not the normal focus. The thing you focus on and you covet, success, to build, to build on success, uh, will be taken away from you. I don't know why that is. I mean, Mickey Rooney said it best. We talked about being an actor. You know, he said, you know, the secret to getting to, to his success and to getting all these roles, and because he's kind of a funny-looking guy, or was, you know, a funny looking guy and and um basically uh you know about five feet tall and you know you look at him and go he doesn't have a lot going for him how do you get all these roles and it's like and his answer was you know looking back on it was not looking i always get the role he said when i don't look for the role when i try not to get the role when i'm looking anywhere but the role and that's exactly the same in business. And that's the same in, you talk to people that are successful in, in well, they, no, no, you can't have the excuse that they sold their souls, therefore they're successful. Then, I mean, you could look at it this way and say, well, the whole world has fallen, so what does that matter or whatever? But, I mean, you, you see, it's, uh, another excuse is, well, I'm not selling my soul, so I will be a failure. They're selling their soul, so they're successful. If they are successful, then they must have sold their soul, which is uh, wrong thinking because the Lord also rewards people that he that come out of nowhere, and they don't know to anybody. And we know those people exist. So there can't, there isn't this rule across the board that oh, they're successful, therefore they sold their soul. That that is a um, a logical falsehood. Illogical falsehood, if you will. I mean, it makes sense logically, 
You know, you have to sell your soul to be successful. Therefore, all successful people sold their souls. But it's not true. But that's the, that's the current thinking, and that encourages people to say to their sons and daughters, hey, son, you've got to sell your soul in order to be successful. You want to get into that fraternity and all that, you're going to have to uh, grow the F up and understand that this is how it's done. And then, of course, someone like that wouldn't complain when they see NDAA and uh, El, El Presidente whacking people right and left because they, too, are corrupt. Therefore, nothing gets done. The news media reports, oh, you know, this guy's killed. Oh, they got this guy. Oh, there's 200 people killed, collateral damage. Ah, a drop in the bucket. Who cares? All of that blood will be paid for by somebody. All that corruption will be paid for. Everything the United States is doing as the major assassin in the world will be paid for. In blood. In failure. In business failure. In strife. In poverty. In sickness and death. And all that is just brewing right now. And it will visit people that think they're relatively innocent. But no, you're not innocent. If you're in the system at all, you're evil. Unless you have a legal agent that can change it legally. Otherwise, you're painted with the same broad brush. A criminal. Oh, well, you know, grow up on that. Because, look, uh, that's the harsh reality of it. Um... The energy exchange uh, that the secular world does is satanic ritual, is witchcraft. Um, calling it breathing doesn't make it any easier because it is what it is. Therefore, okay, when we look at all these, at popular culture and all these songs that glorify the... Uh, what was it, Rush's, the, 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 the Tom Sawyer, the energy exchange, he gets right on through, the friction of the day, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, all these songs are kind of related. You know, New Age spiritual, spirituality is really kind of like the Yes band, their spirituality is based on the same thing. It's all based on, you know, you could call it benevolent witchcraft, if you like. You know, the energy exchange, the people... You know, and then, and then, of course, the dark side is using other people, controlling other people, um, using this power to put people in, under your um, servitude and then trading them like trading cards because you're savvy, they're not. That's just the most evil thing I could even think of. I, I can't imagine someone trying to do that to me. Well, usually if they do that, That's the end of them. I mean, ultimately, they they have a, they have a real problem with not me, but the Lord. They got a problem with. They got to you know answer to Him. Whenever they do that to me, they're, I'm doing it to them. I mean, it's, they're not doing anything to me. Basically, what it means is they get tagged, and once they're tagged, they're um, they get tagged because behind your back they try to do something, or in the spirit they try to do something. Okay. So the minute they try to do something, they get tagged. And then that tag is kind of like, you know, it's sort of like the chickens are about to come home to roost, uh, you know, and it gives them a chance to repent. So I always pray, Lord, that all those evil spells, anyone who tries to buy and sell you, is put under, that's a spell, you know, because they're, they're using powers to do that, to get you under their control so they can... Um, do whatever it is they're going to do. Steal from you, whatever. And um, steal whatever you've got, you know, inside of you. And then, or sell you to the highest bidder or whatever. And that's, that's unfortunately, the really evil exchange of the world. And, um, you know, I know that most of you probably, well, you probably have been victims of this and not really known it. Because most people, you know, most... Average people aren't 
can't figure it out. If they're not in it, they can't figure it out. Because it's very hard to uh, imagine that people would do that to one another. And, you know, from the Lord's perspective, those people are worthy of death. And yet the Lord's giving them a grace period to be able to repent and go on with their lives. He's been very benevolent and ridiculously loving and merciful to allow this time period between running and gunning like that, and you know, uh, uh, and you know, um, you know, uh, and all the songs and everything, and and it, it being very benevolent and giving people so many other opportunities and chances to to change, and you know, and but they think. You know, when they're young, they think they're the first people to ever discover it, the energy exchange. They're, they feel they're the first people to ever discover this thing. And then they laugh at people that aren't in on it, feeling like they got something going on. And then the next thing you know, they die these horrible deaths and they lose everything they ever strove for. And you warn them that they're going to crack up. And you do this every generation, and for hundreds and millions of generations, it seems, and they don't listen. They just don't listen. Uh, why don't they listen? I think they don't listen because they feel that they're going to win the game. And they feel that they can somehow... You know, I don't know. Uh, look, I know they get really mad. You know, some people get very frustrated with me because, you know, it's not me. It's that I have my friends around, you know. They're not humans. They're not right here, you know. But I have protection. Somebody's got my back. And I think that's what it is. And then, and then you know, that, that force or whatever, okay, God's force, um... Like you, look, if you mess with somebody, if you try this crap with somebody that belongs, that's a child of the living God, you, met, you, you not only do you mess with that person, you mess with the entire kingdom of God. And that's why you've been so unlucky. That's why everything's turned to shit. See? Oh, well, the S-bomb, I did it. I'm sorry. I can't, I can't. There's a perfect word for that situation. So, you lose, though you've done everything to win. And the arrogance that gets filled when people feel like they got a little something going on and how arrogant they are. You know, pride goeth before a fall. And uh, we'll see, you know, the end, you know, the, the striving should not be to win. You know, run your race to win, that is overcome, yes. But overcoming and giving thanks to God because he, he made you overcome. Poverty, witchcraft, buying and selling of souls unlucky things, bad things being said about you, you know, just a gauntlet of, of troubles that the world seeks to put on people that um, resist or rebel. <clears throat> and so when you make it through that, that's the race to get through all that <clears throat> and to overcome. And in so doing, you know, you have your reward in the overcoming of it. And this is the this is the absolute minimum requirement of Jesus. Without overcoming, you have no position in Christ. To those who overcome will be given eternal life. So it's that simple. What does overcoming mean? It means basically when you're saved, when you're wedded, when you're taken, when he takes you. Um... that you don't go back over where you were. 
that's kind of it. I mean, once you've seen the truth, it's, you don't go back to say a lie. And I, I don't think it's really, you know, or you, you, you understand. I mean, you know, you understand what's at stake so that the things of the world just don't seem that important to you anymore. And so uh, you just naturally overcome. I mean, that, that's, it's not like there's a big effort involved. It's kind of like your position. You're in your position of the overcomer. So you overcome by virtue of your position that Jesus Christ put you in and that you're in him, he is in you as 1 John 17. In that sense... You're over, you're, you know, if, if that's your position, you have overcome. You know, yes, you, they can make you sin one way. You can, you, can, you can do all these various sins, but you still have that position, and you can, you can repent and seek forgiveness of the Lord uh, based on your flesh still being rebellious and you not being able to control it completely. That's, that's one thing, but it's, if your heart goes to that corruption, meaning that it embraces that way, the Rocky Mountain way, <laughs> um, as the way uh, that you really believe in, then you then you were never an overcomer. You had not ever overcome in the first place. See what I mean? So people say, "Well, I thought once saved, always saved." Like, yes, if they if there's a change or whatever, it means they never it wasn't it it wasn't real to begin with. So there is no um, there is no disparity with God in this. There is no um, um, there is no difference with God here. You know, it's still once, once saved, always saved. Because when a pers person's put in that position, that's the position they're in. It's like um, a reality thing. You can't, you know, you can make up all kinds of stories about reality, but in the end, reality is going to be reality, regardless of what you feel about it or what you think about it or what you project on it. It still is what it is, no matter what you say or do. And that's what I love about real reality. No matter what I say or do, it always remains the same. No matter what I say or do, God always remains the same. He is reality, so he always remains the same. And when he instructs me, it's always good. I don't always follow or hear it right, but and, and when I, to the extent that I don't, then it doesn't go quite as well. But he never has steered me wrong. The Lord has always steered me into still water. I have to be attentive to him. And re recognize and realize that, uh, you know, though I have been around the world and around the people of the world, to me it's like I've been nowhere. I've just been in a wasteland. Wherever I go, whatever city I go to, it's still another wasteland to me. I was just in, um, we were at a, a music kind of, kind of convention type of thing and and to fly out of there, I had to connect through Minneapolis, and then from Minneapolis, to, uh, it's a two-hour flight to Albuquerque. And in Minneapolis, it's a huge airport, and uh, you have to take this this like tram, but it still doesn't even get you to where your terminal is. You just keep walking. It's all this big indoor mall, and all these people going right and left confused, not understanding, you know, they're all kind of into their own trip and they're into their job or they're into their clothes or they're into shopping, they're into this, they're into that. But nobody's really conscious, you know, they're running this way and that way. And I'm not that conscious myself, but I'm, I'm conscious of being different and being sort of, you know, a little bit bothered by the fact that, you know, the humanity is unconscious. So wherever I find it, it's the same, whether it's Minneapolis, we were in Fort Wayne, Fort Wayne, you know, just another town that goes by on, like a blur, uh, or whether you're in, um, you know, uh, Miami, Florida, or whether you're in L.A. or San Francisco, it all just, it's all the same. It's the same in Washington, D.C. It's the same in Paris, France. It's all the same. So we look over the landscape of the apocalypse and then we realize it's got nothing to do with this events in real time. You know, prophecy has to be a fluid thing. There's no absolute 
uh, a human that can imply that that could impose absolute will on prophecy. This will happen on such a day. That will happen on such a day. This is tribulation. That is the Antichrist. This will be the end. That is the all. That is all she wrote. God's going to wrap it up. Jesus is returning. That's the end of it. It happens on this date. Rosh Hashanah, 2018. It is over, baby. Over. Jesus is here. Antichrist is defeated. I'm like, well, if you thought Obama was the Antichrist, he's already defeated. So that's the end of him. So bring in the next one. I still have friends who believe he's the Antichrist, and they're, they're just going to believe that. And they believe the only reason that we don't think he's the Antichrist is because he's so familiar to us, we figure, ah, he's so familiar, how could he be the Antichrist? And it's kind of like, what, anything good come out of Nazareth? What comes out of Nazareth? Nothing good can come out of Nazareth. That, in other words, Jesus can't be the Messiah because nothing good comes out of Nazareth. So... You know, that, that's, what, that's the thing we're applying to Obama, so we're not seeing it carefully enough. That flies follow him everywhere he goes, hordes of flies, and, uh, and, and, and a thing like that. And, and a friend of mine had a dream that, you know, there, he had two doors behind him when he was speaking. One, one uh, door was direct to hell, he had a direct connection to hell, and the other one was some sort of party or something, ongoing party. Then I deciphered it for my friend. I said, the ongoing party is, um, that's a dimension that they get to go to while in this life. They get, they're kind of a slice of heaven now. So they have like a, a counterfeit heaven. They, they can actually go there, uh, translate themselves there or get there. You know, that's what UFOs are for, to take them there. At, or to Ichiku Park. Remember Ichiku Park? Um, you know what I mean? There's an access point to another reality that's just like this one and it has physical space and but it's it's you know there ain't nobody crying there's nobody uh, upset there it's like a like a fake or counterfeit heaven but it's they get it in real time or at least the honchos do you know the honchos of this uh, system we're talking about which is um which is amazing cuz I've seen it and my friends of you know I know I know other people who've confirmed what I saw, they saw, and we all saw. We all were witnesses. Just like people who witness UFOs. Yes, we've been witnesses of it, but we're not privy to it, you know. Um, it's on the other side of the veil. To get over there, you have to, you, you don't, you lose your soul or you're not going to get access to that. So it's, and then you've got to feed on these other souls. So the, to the extent you do that is the extent you get to go back to Disneyland whenever you want. But that's the thing they're all hiding, that, that whole reality. They, they feel like, shoot, if you just wake up and uh, smell the, 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 the cupcakes, you, you know, you could, you know, that would be, this would be a great life. You got that, you got this, you got this, you got this. You know, what, can, what makes you keep going? And it's like, I'm, I'm, keep going? I'm eternal. I, I don't understand that. I keep going no matter what because I, I, I am eternal. I am motion. I am light and motion. So I never stop. There is no stopping. It's forever. But to get in their head, you have to have these little pockets of finitude, you know, of, 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 of finite things. You know, their little box of heaven, their box of souls. They're buying and selling of souls. Their their box of this, their box of light, their self-contained light that gives no reflection. Everything is selfishness, right? And indeed, it does work. But I'm just here to warn uh, the prophetic warning number two. Should you buy and sell lambs of God, you will be taken out. You, you think Obama with his drone strikes is something? You should see this. Taken out means anything you want it to mean, but basically the spiritual fruits cut off for one thing, number one. That would be losing your friends, losing your acquaintances, losing your position, losing your climbing the ladder of life, whatever that rung on the ladder you're on, you lose that. Then the next step is degradation. Then after that, desertion. And then after that, I don't know, drugs, whatever, down on your luck, you know, a loser. And um, babbling to yourself on the sidewalk, I guess, would be the ultimate. And then, or if you're lucky, you get to go bye-bye, you know, and, and put it into it. But 
Nobody really goes bye-bye. That's the other thing. You can't die to get out of this thing. And a lot of people think, I'm going to either die and be reincarnated or I'm going to die and be unconscious of all this, which would be very peaceful. You are not going to die and be unconscious of all this. You are responsible for your actions and, and inactions, and you will be held to account at the end of this situation. It won't be like a literal account, like going into a, you know, a courtroom and being judged by your peers. It won't be like that. You won't, it, it's not this, this, this staged theatrical thing. It's just a process, almost like a birth process. You know, you're weighed and measured, right? Like a baby. And, um, you know, it's very impersonal, okay? Some are good, some are bad, some are some. You know, it, it, it all depends where you're on the spectrum. If you are worldly, you would be less. If you are spiritual, you would be more. In this world, if you're worldly, you're more. If you're spiritual, you're less. You know, you're gullible, kind of like a loser. But when you're worldly, you're savvy, kind of Machiavellian, sort of like Mick Jagger, you know, because you're worldly, very worldly, very, very carnal, very thick with flesh, very much dying flesh, decrepit maggots crawling all over, skeletons rotting in the, in the desert sun, pirates of the Caribbean, going for the gold. There's always a lesson in all these things. Um, eternal life is for those who want eternal life, who have a built-in desire for it. And uh, eternal hell is for those who um, have inverted their consciousness inward and upon themselves so that everything is a reflection of them and they are a reflection of everybody else. And all is one and one is all. And in that, in that prison cell, you know, Babylon sinks beneath the waves and becomes lost Atlantis. And another civilization on earth dies and then there's another one with another Bible, another cosmogony, another Adam and Eve, and the whole thing starts all over again. Yes, it's happened, and it happens over and over again, the same patterns, because it's written in our DNA. So we enact the same thing. And my job is to break open your mind so that you can understand who you are, where you are, what this is, what this is not, so that you can make uh, a rational decision about what you're going to do, whom you will serve. Because it's not about you. It's, it is about your free will, though. You can become a lizard through free will. If you, I, may, I may force you to listen to my song. I don't know. You know, it's amazing that um, the way that... Uh, I'm tested with music because I, I put it out there, all this stuff that is just from my heart. You know, it's, it's the whole prophetic music. It's all prophetic music. And um, maybe not all of it, but I mean, most of it. I don't know. Yeah, probably it is. I, I, you know, it just comes out the way it comes out. Just like this comes out the way it comes out. And I keep thinking, you know, and someone the other day told me, you've got to do something that, you know, people can really relate to. People can't really understand what you're talking, you know. It's like, no, no, no. You understand what I'm talking about. You just can't stand that it's the truth. And so you don't want to go with it. You need bread and circus and distraction because you're not wanting to deal with the fact that the lizards are here in charge of everything. And everyone who's gone to the satanic side knows that. And they're here, they're, they're messing with the human genome and the plant genome, and uh, basically they're here to destroy whatever humanity was. And to the extent that you help them, the lizards that is, uh, you will be rewarded, and if you really help them, just like in the movie They Live, you get to uh, have the caviar and champagne, dream, champagne dreams, and cav champagne and caviar dreams, or whatever it is, that uh, lifestyles of the rich and famous, you know, that, that is true. 
if you if you assist the enemy of humanity and put a knife in the back of humanity and betray humanity, that's you you that's selling your soul right there. If you do that, they will reward you. The lizards, that is. Um, that's why you have people like Obama selling us out and, and other politicians. They all have. Uh, Congress, they all have. Because they get great rewards for that. If you join them, of course, you'll burn in hell. The burning in hell is, is literal and not literal, but I wouldn't mess with it. In other words, I'm not going to deny it because the Lord says if I change anything in the book of Revelation to be something else other than what it says, then I'm going to be burning in the lake of fire myself. People forget that. That's what it says right toward the end of the book of Revelation. Jesus says, if you change any of the prophecies in this book, you're going to burn. So I, I don't go against the, the thousand-year reign of Christ, the end of the, you know what I mean? It's like I see it being literal, literally fulfilled, but not being predictable, I guess, by man. The main purpose of the book of Revelation is obviously the gathering of Jesus' lambs, you know, and the, and the wedding of the lamb. You know, and that's the most important thing, which is embodied in the new Jerusalem. Um, but the other most important thing is God will take vengeance upon those who spilled the blood of his children <clears throat> or who, who used his children or who hurt his children or engaged in idolatry and witchcraft and all those kind of things that, that people do, that the Lord will, you know, pay back. will set things right. will bring justice. And then there'll be a state of equilibrium, you know, before the end of all things. And I think each generation kind of goes through that progression of things. Certainly the Roman Empire was one, and then now we have another one, and the, uh, the age of Adolf Hitler was another one, the age of Obama is another one. And at the same time, we have, you know, the book of Revelation, and of, of which the, one of the main prophecies that people miss, and I think it's very important, people don't seem to understand this, so I will explain it. I will explain it. You know, this is a prophecy. Um, this is a prophecy. And he said to me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book. For the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. Here's the secret. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. In other words, at the end of time, of your time, of my time, things are going to be as they are. In other words, unholy will be there. Holy here, unjust here, just there, whoremonger here, righteous one there, right? Workers of iniquity here, workers of light over there. The Lamb and his people and the world. And everything will be just as it is. Just like in the days of Noah. They were eating and drinking and given in marriage. In other words, life was just rolling on even though there was a sudden change. And that may be, you know, a precursor to the, to the coming of the Lord and to the end of days. So it's a mystery. I'm not going to call the timing on it. I'll just say that over the last generations where people have tried to call the end of the world and this and that, they've all been wrong. It doesn't mean that, that one day that may not happen. Anything's possible that you can imagine. But when I read the book of Revelation, it, it speaks to me today. It speaks to me about the end of all days. It speaks to me about the end of these days. It speaks to me about God's justice and his mercy and of the mystery of the Lamb. The Lamb and the mystery of the Lamb is light. because And then light becomes like a metaphor for life. But the mystery of the Lamb is light, is that the Lamb is the light. And you, I, we are in that, so we are the Lamb which is the most bizarre thing in the world. So we are light. 
and God lights the creation and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the new Jerusalem is lit by God Almighty, so there's no need of the sun, moon, or stars, or the earth the way it was, or any external light source, because God lights it, and the Lamb is the light thereof, of the new Jerusalem, of which you are light. Amazing. See, my feeling right now, as we're laying this prophecy out of God, is that I wouldn't want to miss out on that, you know. I just want to be in the Shekinah. Even if I had no body and I was, who knows, I was just consciousness. I, I want to be there in the light. I want to be light of the light. I want to be the light that lights. Isn't that what all the fighting's all about here? Everyone's trying to get light off somebody else by harnessing their desires and whatnot for their own purposes, and then once they get that pimped out, they go ahead and sell it. Minding your business. That's your business, huh? And then writing cryptic lyrics and then putting them in rock songs and figuring that, you know, no one's going to figure it out. Speaking to the choir, in other words, about stupid shit that nobody really gives a damn about, ultimately, because it doesn't even matter. There's a mosquito trying to get me. Time for my... Oh, he got away. Anyway, this is the kind of preaching that I, I would love to hear from the pulpit or revealing, I guess, more like it's a revealing. I'd love to hear this from the pulpit, but I don't think I will. Because that's just too much for them. They get to John 17, they choke. They get to Luke 17, 21, they choke. They get to Matthew 7, 21, 22, 23, etc., they choke. They get to Matthew 18, 6, they choke. Right? These, these guys preaching from the pulpit, they, they just go, they got to do a work around all those things, right? They can't handle that stuff. They get to uh, James 4 4, they choke. The, hey. Oh, yeah, I hear him. He's going, Zzzz. yeah, he's trying to get me. Uh, well, you know, I'm glad to see a mosquito. It's been so dry here that I figured. You know, where are the mosquitoes these days? And I can see they are alive and well. And uh, they are uh, very busy right now trying to catch up and, and drink blood. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, uh, because that's, that's what they do. Now, what about the vampire situation? Uh, is there a world where, like hell, for example where people are, are all kind of intertwined with each other and melded with each other and unable to get away from each other and like literally locked in prisons of hell. Absolutely. And could the lake of fire be a metaphor for that kind of afterlife, after this life experience? And I'm, and I'm like, um, there was a movie out some years ago called What Dreams May Come. It was about after death and about how these people go through a series of dreams, you know, and I'm, I understand that that's pretty accurate, but the, 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 the definition of hell would be, well, but I can't escape, and I'm kind of at the whim of those dreams. And I I'm, and I'm feel tra it ultimately trapped, no matter what kind of configuration I go through. And they try to make it like, well, souls are going to work out their traumas, and they're going to try to forgive one another in this afterlife experience. And, and they're going to be put together in these scenarios with, that repeat some of the trauma that they had in life, because now they have a chance to forgive one another, and it was kind of about forgiveness, from what I remember. And forgiveness is a very powerful thing. Ultimately, if you're with the Lord, you kind of naturally forgive because um, having the Lord, ooh, did I get it? Yeah, I got, oh my gosh. 
I, you'll be night happy to know I grabbed that one, got him, smashed him, and there was blood that came out. So he obviously got me, and I, he was coming back for more. Isn't that amazing? Got him. He'd already had his. He, he he was a glutton. He'd already had his share of blood from somebody. And then and then bottom line is he he was still not satisfied. Oh, that is just truly amazing. Anyway, he got another one. But I seem to be good at that. Yeah, I uh, I learned over the years. Um. Is there a place? Well, let, let's just put it this way. Yes, I believe that there's all kinds of levels to this thing. And, um, you know, I think it was Paul that said to be absent uh, from the body is to be present with the Lord. That no death wears thy sting. Remember that part of his um, letter and which he was, you know, showing the victory over death. You know, if I, in other words, it's, whether I base or whether I bound in life or in death, I have the victory because of Jesus Christ. So I'm grateful to, to Christ because without whom I would be nothing. And I feel exactly the same way Paul did. I mean, that's, that's the way I think we all basically feel. Without our Lord, we have nothing. And... Um, you know, there's nothing to worry about. That's the other thing. I've shared the gospel with people who are you know, secular and who have are mem- have other religions and have other concerns, and uh, and are young and they want they want the world and they want to conquer it and all that. And I totally understand that. And I have nothing more to say about it. I just probably, you know, if if the, these ideas are rejected, I probably. Um, you know, probably better to live by example than by um, than, than anything else. But as an example, I don't have a very, you know, I'm, I'm far from anything to be made a model of, but because I, I do, uh, I do cuss and I do eat and I do drink and I do smoke. Not all the time, but I, not a lot. It's, it sort of fluctuates. You know, I'm kind of like not the most um, perfect person in that, in all these kind of worldly senses. But it, see, but I'm not really even in my in my mind in the way I look at myself, which is hard to look at because I I don't know really what that means. But I don't feel like I'm completely of this world either. You know what I mean? I don't feel com- like I'm completely, I feel like I'm visiting here from, you know, I feel qu- kind of like an alien, like, but I'm, I don't feel alienated, if you will, because I feel part of everything. At the same time, I feel like I'm a visitor kind of here, and I was sent here to speak uh, words that in and of themselves may not be so powerful but in the vibration of the things that they would have the power to awaken God's lamb so that they would be his children, which they will be. And um, so no worries, you know, if that's you, that if you don't have worldly success and, and you know, they, you're invisible, um, I've enjoyed, you know, there were times I was so invisible that I was literally invisible, L- literally, actually literally. And and I didn't know it at the time. And then I was like, I walk up to someone and wave in their face and they, they literally don't, I'm literal have literal invisibility. And um, so I kind of marveled at that, but, uh, you know, no more than I marveled at the uh, satanic heaven that was there, you know, that was sitting there, you know, a uh, big party. And... Uh, that, I believe, was the interpretation of the dream of, that my friend had about Obama. That on the one hand is the dimension that they get to go to called the party, which is, uh, you know, also you could call it the happening. And then on the other side was a, was a door directly to hell, which indicates that there is a hell. 
uh, where souls are, are burning in hell and suffering or, you know, or whatever is there, that they're consciously burning and suffering. And, and then there's the way of forgiveness and of Jesus, which is the way of forgiveness. So you have to let everything go at the same time. You have to rejoice when the Lord moves to um, set things right, but not in a personal way or not with animus. So it's not, it's not an easy walk. It's not for everyone. You know, obviously, at, at the same time, I mean, if they knew what I knew, there would be no, um, there would be no religions and there would be no, there would be perfect fidelity with God. Say, yeah, Lord, I have this flesh and it acts up on occasion. I'm sorry, I repent, I repent, I repent, but you, Lord, are my way. You, Lord, are it for me. There is no other thing for me. And, um, I feel sorry for the for the people in the slavery and for a lot of the humans you know who are unwittingly being uh, formed and fashioned into tools of evil they know not what they do that's that's I have to just come to the same conclusion I can't get mad at them I you know I I, I hope they could hear I know that whether I look at a Vivendi ad or an ad in Rolling Stone magazine, or an ad in Time magazine, or a logo um, on the billboard, or um, any kind of print art or uh, music that I hear on the speakers in the car, or anything that I encounter, I understand it has the, it has the official stamp of Satan on it, or you wouldn't hear it or see it. So my worldly, I, I know people that are, that are, you know, have street smarts, and they tell me that, so therefore, they sold their souls to the devil in order to get a place at the table. They all do. And I say, well, it's not completely axiomatic. God raises up people that defy those rules, even though everyone hates it, and they're after them, and they want to set them up and, and destroy them. It's like, these people want to destroy that which is good to make themselves feel better about doing that which is bad in order to get their so-called good result. Bad things have always led to good things. Doing bad things has always been rewarded with good things until it doesn't. Until reap what you sow, karmic debt kicks in. And it always does. And the people that are the perpetrators, the psychopaths, the... Uh, Controllers, the witches, the whatnot, you know, who are, who are uh, involved in this exchange called Babylon, Mystery Babylon. What ends up happening, and this is, you know, very, very true. What ends up happening is it all falls and collapses into nothingness. Now, it happened in 1929 with the stock market. It happened a thing called World War II. <laughs> It happened that now they're trying to gin up World War III, and I guess we should talk about that. Yes, they're, they've got all the ships in position, all the things in position for the Middle East War to, to kick off over Syria, which we called World War. We said, you know, World War III has begun. I mean, what is difficult about that to understand? They need that in order to wipe the debt off the books, and no, no human life is worth trillions of dollars. So by having a war, they get to claim, you know, all, these, all this blood that will be spilled, all the people killed. And that becomes payment. That blood is the payment for the debt of what's been racked up. The only way you can pay for it is with World War III. So we have to have World War III in order to pay the debt. You can't pay it in labor. You pay it in, that's right, blood. Now... Anybody with any common sense should understand that. Jesus paid, the, paid it all for everybody. And if you go into Christ, then there is no debt, obviously. You're exempt from that rule that I just said. And even if they kill you, you don't die anyway. You're, you're eternal. So, you know, it's basically your, your plight here is over and you're free and you are the light, you know. It's like they're not light, you're light. They also entails the physical universe as it is now is darkness you are light if you walk in the room they all put their shades on 
because you're glowing so bright. They're going, gosh, I want to get a hold of that power source. Mmm, boy, that's a good power. I could be a rock star with that. And look how stupid they are. They don't even know the power that they've got. Let's just take it from them. Candy from a baby. And I, seriously, they, they do this. I'm here to put them on note. I, hear, I have to say this. I've said it over the years again and again and again and again. And I, I remember, oh, yes, I remember in 2009, maybe, I remember being drained. Like like somebody, you know, did a ritual. It took what I had, and I couldn't even get up off the floor. I was just completely that tired. Suddenly, it just came over me, like, all at once. I knew it was a, a, a ritual, and I found out who did it. And it um, didn't happen again, exactly. Some other things happened, but uh, that was really something. That was really horrific. So I know that when sometimes when we feel depressed and we're down, you might, you know, pray and ask the Lord to set it right. Because if anyone's done that, you just say, look, that they, the only way they could do it is by casting a spell on you. So you return that, you know, so that they would know that they've been caught, obviously. You know, so that they would know it came from you. And they would have the chance to repent. So it must be returned. It must be. Or you're not to, if you don't return it, you're not doing that person any good. If you just let it go and go, oh, I'm just a fool forgiving everybody. Then the person that did the perpetration won't have a chance to learn from the mistake. Because every time they do that, it's a mistake that comes back on them eventually in the form of cancer and, you know, failure in business and all those kind of things that are very dramatic that happen to people all the time. Death, strange accidents, um, the death of their children before them. You know, these kinds of things happen to those who are involved in the mystery exchange. Or if you like, those who are on the magic bus. Or if you like, those who are in the magical mystery tour. Or if you like, those who are... Wow, I wonder how many songs we can reference. Or if you like, the entire Yes collection of music. Or if you like... <laughs> Dark Side of the Moon. Or if you like... Um, Highway 61 Revisited. Or if you like... Uh, Purple Haze. Or whatever, you know. Uh, let's multiply it by 100% and you'd be pretty accurate except for Norman Greenbaum's Spirit in the Sky. Or Doobie Brothers' Jesus is just all right. Every once in a while, the exception, right? I said there are, there are not many exceptions, but there are exceptions. Um, there are a lot of people that, that made their living off the devil and off all this stuff. Mind games, yeah. Um, who... Um, who now believe in God, who are now touting God and talking about God publicly. Um, I have no feeling one way or the other about it. For me to be able to understand, I have to look a person in the eye and whether I feel a connection or not. And that's all it really comes down to. And even then, I'm not going to judge and come up with a conclusion about someone, even, even people that look like they're really on the dark side. Even, even I just can't count anyone out. I don't know. I, it's not for me to put a judgment on it. It's not for me to say what their final destination. I can give you an indicator if you keep doing this and that and you keep going, maybe that is you and you decide that God sucks and you, know, you love the world and you're going to hold on as long as you can, get as many plastic surgeries and... Hopefully you'll last until they have the bion extens extensions of uh, Ray Kurzweil. Now, Ray Kurzweil, let me explain something very carefully. You have to really understand this. This goes out to all the people that believe they're going to be in the life extension mode. All life extension gear, nanobots, um, technology, and super advanced technology that's kind of incomprehensible to, to, to uh, you know, a modern human, um, do one thing. The whole purpose is one thing. Folks, listen very carefully. The whole purpose of life extension is euthanasia. The minute a person tries to exchange themselves into machine form, let's say their brain intact, is the minute they, uh, they die. They may be a robot with that brain imprint, but it would be like having a clone of yourself. That's still not you. See what I mean? It's not you, not your experience. 
So I just want to make sure you understand all the people that have downloaded themselves into machines or that will and so on and so forth. Um, this is simply a death chamber. Not one of them survives. Ever. Never has and never will. Oh, they might be like the demons who have memories of all your past and everything. They may have an imprint of someone's brain and have all their memories. But they do not have... That soul is not there. Just want to make sure very clear you understand that. Where Ray Kurzweil is going, where Google is going with their... Uh, uh, with the singularity, the singularity is mass human extinction. The singularity is the death of the soul, the death of the person. When you wed your mind with a machine, it's not a warning, it's like, it, 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 yes, it'll be something that will function, it just won't be you. That's the end of you. You know, yes, there'll be something in your place, but it won't be you. It will be you died, and it went on, and it is all it really is. The singularity, it's a big cosmic joke. It's simply a mausoleum for the dead anyway, who've already sold out and, are, and, are, and now are trying to cash in on the goodies by selfishly hoarding them away from all you people. They think they're being selfish and hoarding it. This is the ultimate and ultimate rebellion against God. And the, the bottom line is that you're really the ones who are benefiting. They're really the stupid ones. And you may see a being that's a thousand years old walking around with all bionics, self-replicating. I mean, they have that already, self-replicating so that it never dies. That's like being in a prison forever. That's a sentence of hell, since the world is really multidimensional. And even if they have some dimensional abilities, it's still not ultimate dimensionality. So therefore, it would be a prison. Anyway, the person who did exist, who got replaced by this avatar, uh, ceased to exist as a human being and exists now as some sort of machine with a memory bank. Saddest thing on, on earth that makes Ray Kurzweil is probably the stupidest individual that ever drew breath. You know, he may have a lot of brilliant theories, and you see Kurzweil on the name of some synthesizers and stuff, but he's absolutely the stupidest fool that ever drew breath, ever in the history. In, in our civilization, he would be the stupidest one, yeah. The dumbest of the dumb. To not understand that the singularity is death would be the equivalent of me saying, um, you know, calling the sun the moon or the, you know, saying that gravity goes upwards or, I, you know, some kind of thing that, that just isn't, obviously isn't true that any, any child could see. Kurzweil can't. And I've read a bunch of his articles and, you know, I've done some research. Um, and his theories and even the way he talks about them, to me, make him look like, uh, I just start laughing. I, just, I can't even believe this this clown. And the fact that he has followers, and most of these people are, have PhDs. What does that tell you about our educational system? That they have PhDs and they're thinking that he's the most brilliant guy in the world and they can't wait to become part of the singularity. Or if you like, the wedding of machine and human. Or if you like, the wedding of computer consciousness with human consciousness. Or if you like, the, the, the wedding of um, biotech... Um, bionic technology with um, and computer technology with human, the wedding of the two. The, the, that would be the consummation of Lucifer. You know, like we have the consummation of the wedding feast of the Lamb. That would be the consummation of Lucifer, which is delusion, death, a lie, pain, suffering, failure. Only the stupid with their PhDs will be there. There is nowhere, by the way. There is canceled because the Lord's creation here with all the Milky Ways and all the millions of everything can simply be set aside any time the Lord wants as if it never was. It's at his behest, it's his, it his gifting that it's there for now, but he could just as easily think of something else and it's gone. 
So what I would do is I would get with the person who's the great designer of everything and get with him. That's the singularity. Wed with him. That's the singularity. Our singularity is the wedding feast of Jesus. It's the wedding of the spirit flesh. It's the wedding of God and man that becomes the light, the new Jerusalem. That is the singularity. What they're talking about is a lie. Are they conscious out there? Um, they. My answer when 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 a guy was telling me I have to come up with music they can relate to, my answer is, uh, you, they can relate to this just fine, and I'm not going to stop doing what I'm doing. The music is sick. It's so awesome. I don't care that people are too stupid to get it. It doesn't really matter to me. Uh, what do you want me to do? Start writing about like themes like Madonna, Gaga, and all that crap? No way. You know, do you, you don't think that music should warn them about the lizards and about the changing of the DNA and the, and the end of them? That there's this is a game they can't win? That in every possible dramatic situation, humanity is the loser unless there is some agent that enters in that starts changing it without which the humans are simply on a death boat to the end of, to the ultimate failure, which is the fact that they'll be assessed as having done nothing here except engage in their own folly and vanity and selfishness and um, meaninglessness. And um, they have themselves to blame. I mean, there's no one else to blame. But the reason I guess we're speaking this way right now is because probably, you know, time is kind of short in, in some sense of the word. Uh, I haven't been around to speak because I've been busy producing uh, music that does communicate with people that tells you in a few minutes the same thing on taking me two hours to tell. It's just more efficient medium. I may try my hand at some YouTubes, but it just seems to me that this is... Um, well, I like to do this on occasion, you know, to try to make sense to you, to try to reach you in some way. I realize that it's kind of a losing battle on, you know... I, I look at the people that just kind of look at me as a fool. I'm like, really? You're just telling me all about yourself when you do that. That you're worldly. That you believe that you'll live forever. That you, you, you kind of know you'll die, but not really. That there's no consequences the way you're living. You're just going to try to be a karmically good person so that bad things don't happen to you. And... Keep your nose clean and play the game. Keep your hand in the game. Keep fresh. Keep the power going, but without hurting anybody else, really, and all that. And somehow it'll wind up okay. That's like millions of people. You know, billions of people. And I think to myself, wow. They all think they can win the game. When the game isn't even about them it's about something else entirely and I think that's a good place to leave off uh, a feeling like yeah it was a prophetic word and it's draining right now it's definitely a drain right now but I was excited to get up to share it because I thought okay the thoughts are really clear it's really clear it's really clear, and I'm thinking back on this podcast now and saying it's clear, clear, clear. It's really crystal clear. The war will help you. The debacles around the world will help you. The um, fear tactics of the Illuminati, whatever, will help you. The um, Alex Jones screaming that they're psychopath. Have you heard him lately? Ah. Well, I mean, he sounds all different than when I first started listening. And even over the last, say, eight years, I mean, he sounds like, at this point, he's beyond uh, 
screaming the alarm or the or the or the uh, what is it? He uses the uh, the megaphone or whatever. He's beyond that now. He's just saying they're out right there to kill you. You know the government, the agency, this that. Well, we we we've said that. You know, you'd get a very big, powerful, corrupt military industrial complex government, and obviously they're going to do corrupt, bad things. You know, it's they're only like a million times stronger than them than them. All the crime families put together, all the triads, all the Italians, all the Jews, all the gangs, all the mafias, even the Russians. Put them all together, they're not, they're, they are not anywhere near, even close to the power of the, the federal and henceforth global government. The global government that's in place right now is more powerful than all the crime families that ever did, you know, did their crimes. <laughs> so what do you think they're going to do? But Jones is screaming and yelling that, you know, that, that uh, you know, just, you know, that, like I never heard him before. I mean, I, not that I'm a big listener over the years. I just, you know, tune in every once in a while for a spell, for a period, you know. And, and um, so I tuned into him lately. And, and he's basically, you know, saying we're beyond the alarm, this is it, red alert, they are there to kill you, uh, there is no other explanation. Um, I mean, there is about why, but I mean, th this is it, it's, it's, it's just about over. Or it's all over, or something, he's, he's, we're beyond the end game now, we're into the, the war, or whatever. And um, he's encouraging people to stand up and, and do what's right, and reform the sheriffs, and, you know, to try to take back the country uh, town by town. And it's all very noble and, uh, you know, courageous. And uh, he's also been talking about God a lot. Mm -hmm. See, at the end of the day, my theory about anybody who's conscious about what he's talking about would become more God-fearing. You know, it wouldn't be just a secular kind of conspiracy gang that would hang around together. It would, all these roads point to God and the spiritual battle. And all the things that people are honest with themselves that they've gotten in life, they've done through spiritual naughtiness. They had to be somewhat spiritual to get some of the things they got because they had to, you know, steal from other people in the spirit. In other words, get them to submit in some way and then take what they have and, uh, you know, use them as a servant or sell them behind, you know, that, that evil game, if you will, is Mystery Babylon. I mean, that's the exchange. That's the. That's how the whole world's put together. Because it's not put together by human hands. It's put together by a satanic hands. And, and the human believes, oh, look, I discovered that. Look how I can make the world my oyster. Oh, look, it's all about me. It's like, no, no, no. This system didn't come from you. You adapted to it because you understand the language of your daddy. Your daddy isn't Yahweh. So you should sow to the world and you should play your game. I'm simply warning you that you try that crap on me. And, um, well, I, I, I don't want to make idle, boastful warnings. But let's just put it this way. There are some people that if you try that on, you'll wish you didn't for the rest of your life, even just one incident of it. I would also pray to send back any of these, uh, all of our listeners, any of these spells, hoodoo voodoo, weird stuff, stealing of batteries, stealing of bodily fluids, stealing of intention, stealing of talents, stealing and degradation and destruction, attempts at lambs. I... On their behalf, Lord, send all these spells back and all the curses back to all that participated uh, to the beginning of time. In Jesus' name, amen. And if that brings World War III, so be it. The debt has to be paid, and the debt cannot be paid in labor. So I, I understand why World War III must come, because man is limited, and that's the only way man can... Uh, balance the book, so to speak. Unless, Lord, you intervene to protect all these children, 
and all these things here. I understand you will allow the earth to be hurt because to you, you're not respectful of persons and or anything that's in creation. You, are, uh, you respect reality, which is you, Lord. So I, I honor that because that is the only place I can go that is safe, that is absolute, that is unchanging, that is perfect reality, that enables me to um, have freedom. And I thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, and I will see all of you when I see you out there, okay? I hope that you get other sermons, if I could call this that. I don't think it really is, but my hope is that you can hear that other people will talk to you in this manner, give you practical prophecy, practical, if you like, better word, unveiling of things so you can understand where you are, who you are, the futility of, of all your... You're like a baby in a sandbox thinking you're going to overcome the evil, um, you know, the evil of, uh, of the world outside the sandbox by throwing sand, by doing all kinds of protests, and you're just a baby. You have no influence on anything. Your life is pretty much irrelevant unless, unless, unless it isn't, unless it belongs to the Most High God. Without that, you have no... I mean, yes, yes, you've, I've, I've, you could create value. You could go out and create a, um, I don't know, something that helps people, and all that's good. But it is, as the great Solomon said, at the end of his life where he had the most wisdom of all. He said, all is vanity and a vexation of spirit. The whole duty of man is to serve God and, and him alone. There is nothing else but God. And, and, you know, you do that, and I believe that the rest of it falls in place. But, yeah, the coveting of things, um, that goes because... If you belong to him and you covet something, he'll just slap it away from you. If you're guilty of wanting status, he'll throw your status in the garbage. If you're guilty of wanting um, fame, he'll make sure that you're the, the, the end of the, of, the, of the bus. If you want, um, if you need to get there first, you'll get there last. If you um, decide to start lying, you'll be caught in every lie. If anything that you do, if you belong to him, to get you know, forward, ahead, something will be brought with failure until you finally give up. And when we give up, then the Lord is bliss. He then takes us by the hand and leads us because we're just children. You may be 60 years old. You're just a child. In the overall scheme of things, you know about as much as a little infant, you know, one-year-old, uh, half a year. You know, you need to be gathered and but you have you know free will and you can be very destructive and the Lord just has to make sure he can set you aside from from hurting yourself or others until you know until you calm down and realize it's not about me the most I am is a baby in a sandbox because I don't understand how things work it's not about me anyway it's about him and his purpose for me is in my finding him then that automatically finds my purpose. My purpose is only reflected to me when I find him, when I find myself in him and himself in me. Exactly at that point is there a purpose, but the purpose may not be audible. You may not understand it. You just feel that purpose, which is, yes, you know, there was an intention for you, unique you, to be made upon this earth, that you have a unique thing that uh, God made you for. You may not know what it is, but um, most of the time it's just people existing as the people he created, and that's, their, that's it. That's the purpose. While they look for their purpose, they already fulfill their purpose. Okay, I'll see you next time.